Hello, everybody. God bless you today. Thank you, old Pat, for that song. Oh, what a Savior. How great that song is. I love it with all my heart. A lot of people say it's old-fashioned, but I'm old-fashioned. I like it. I like it a lot. For the old past, go back up there and support them and listen to their music and all those things. Well, how are you doing today? Great. I hope you are. This is Lee Whaley from Crusading for Christ Podcast Hour. I'm just here for, I just got a short video I want to make. And um, something's on my heart, and I want to really share it with you tonight or today or tomorrow, whenever you listen to this, that there's something urgent that's going on uh, in our country. Something urgent's going on in our life. Something urgent's going on in our world today. I mean, I've been here for 66 years, and I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I've not. I've seen some bad things, and I've and I have watched history, and there's been bad things happen. But I've just never seen the world like it is right now, especially the United States of America. I was driving today in a, let me say this before I say that. Yesterday, me and uh, Dr. Kevin Williams did my first podcast. That was my first interview, and I appreciate him doing that. And it went great. We sat there and talked about several things. And at the end of it, Guess what? I messed up. I didn't. I I didn't know how to do some things. I got this new equipment and I didn't know how to run. It. So I apologize. But we're going to do that again. That's going to. I'm going to be doing that, and I'm excited about that. He's a great guy, and I love Kevin Williams. He's got a great heart. He loves God, and he loves his people, and loves his family. Well, you just can't beat it. But today I want I want to talk to you about something that happened to me. I was driving down from Bankhead Highway coming back from Villa Rica today and I was listening to my Bible. That's what I do. I got I drive about four hours. So the whole time I'm driving I'm I'm listening to the Bible as it uh, as it reads off the you know off the radio. I got it hooked up to my phone actually. And as I was listening to the Bible list I listen to Revelation. I try to listen to Revelation about every day. I just love it. But today when it was talking about the end times, you know I mean it's all talking about that after chapter four anyway. Uh, and then leading up to it. But something really came across my heart. And it was like the Lord spoke to me today. And I don't say this lightly because it's it's an important statement. Because for 46 years I've been studying the Bible. I've, I've done all that. But today when I was driving in from, from work from Villarica, the Lord spoke to my heart and it was like he said to me, I'm coming real soon. Now, I know that the Bible says, and we've got bumper stickers and all those things that say Jesus is coming soon. That's been going on for 2,000 years. But it was almost in my soul that the Bible, that God spoke to me and said, no, I'm coming soon. And you need to get about your work. You need to get about the business of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, my last podcast, I, 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 used, I went through the Romans road, how to be saved. I don't even know how many views it got. Probably not many. People don't want to hear that. But let me ask you something. Do you love your wife? Do you love your husband? Do you love your kids? Do you love your grandkids? Listen, I got a, I got a great wife. I mean, I've got an un, unbelievable wife. More than I'll ever deserve. She's a w- wonderful woman lo- and loves her family, loves her kids, loves her grandkids beyond measure. And she loves me. And I love her. And I love my kids. I love them with all my heart. I mean, I die for my kids. I die for her. And then there's those eight grandkids. And Lord have mercy. They're even there's a special place in your heart for them. You when if you don't have grandkids, you'll see when you do. But you just love them so much. They're they're just precious. But what kind of father would I be, or what kind of grandfather would I be, or what kind of husband would I be if I didn't tell my wife or say to my wife, "Look, there's something I want to talk to you about." If she wasn't a Christian, or my kids weren't Christians, or the grandkids weren't Christians, it would be my duty as a father, as a grandfather, as a, a, a husband. Of course, my wife, <laughs> she was a Christian way before I was. That's hard. I don't know how. We, I just got to say, but I'm not going into all that. But anyway, but to talk to them about the Lord, and, and me and Kevin was talking about that yesterday. I think with all of my heart that people have just lost a burden for lost people. But Lord God, this is your kids. These are your family. These are your children. Now, this this is for you preachers out there, you pastors out there that um, are in a pulpit. This is what I'm getting ready to tell you is for you. 
The Bible says, and when Paul was talking in Second, uh, Second Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy chapter four. Uh, I mean, Paul was looking for the Lord to come back in his lifetime, but it's as applicable right now as it was when he when he wrote it down. When Paul wrote the epistle, he says, "I charge you, therefore." This is in chapter 4, verse number 1 of 2 Timothy. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, uh, it says at his appearing in his kingdom. Now what the means by the quick and the dead, that means the living and the dead. Now how can you charge somebody that's dead? He's going because the dead are going to rise too. Anyway, he says, listen, preach the word. Preach the word. What is preaching? Preaching is simply telling. For pastors, it's preaching. They've got points. Some of them preach with points, and some of them preach with titles and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, telling the Word, preaching the Word of God, the Bible. And he says, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. In other words, be sure that what you're preaching is the Word of God. Make sure the doctrine that you're that you're teaching is biblical. Be sure that what you're exhorting, what you're lifting up, what you're doing up with a God is lifting up. It's helping people. It's giving them courage and giving them faith and giving them the boldness and giving them uh, a, a love for God that when you start falling in love with God, you know what you'll do? You'll start telling people about Jesus. I mean, you do. And when you just like, just, I mean, listen, when I first met Annette, man, I had pictures of her. I was telling everybody about her. And I still love her, don't get me wrong, but it was a new it was a new love, and I was man, I've probably been dog after that. But anyway, you just got to tell somebody, right? But then he says, here's what he says. Preach that word, be instant and season, that's what we prove to God. For a time will come. And let me tell you something. The time has come. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He said, But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having engineers. What does that mean? He says they're gonna find them a church. I'm going to go around and I'm going to find me a church that it preaches what I want to be preaching. Oh, yeah, you can find them everywhere today. They're sugarcoating the Word of God. They're little powder puff preachers. Uh, oh, <laughs> Dr. Ed Ballou, I, I, Ed Ballou out of uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. If you ever had the chance to hear him, <laughs> he called them pink, panty, pink pantyhose wearing preachers. That were sissy five preachers preaching the word of God and doctrine and watering it down and sugarcoating it. In other words, it's not, don't sugarcoat the word of God. Preach the word. Preach against sin, which you don't hear a whole lot about anymore in the churches because you don't want to offend anybody. Most churches are in so much debt they can't, they can't afford to offend nobody. And who's in there? And if you get offended, you're going to run off to another church and you're going to try to find you another church. Look, I, I don't mean to be getting on to you folks, but this is serious stuff. This is the time that we anchor ourselves down and we do what God said do, take a stand. For time's going to come, they're not going to endure the sound of doctrine. And listen, these, these churches that are ordaining women and ordaining homosexuals, let me tell you, God isn't pleased with that. He's not pleased with that at all. It's an abomination unto the Lord. Now, we're to love the sinners. Don't get me wrong. Love is the number one thing that we're to do with the sinners. I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to you Christians today. I know we're to love the sinners, but we're not to love the sin. Amen? We're not to fall in love with that sin, the lifestyle. The Bible says, come out from among them, be separate. Boy, that won't preach today. <laughs> Woo! Some of you are going to cut me off right now anyway. And that's fine, because listen, God loves me and I love you. I want you to know I love you. And I need you, and I need your support, and I'm going to talk to you about that real soon. And he says, and they shall turn their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. They don't want to hear the truth, because you know why? The Bible says, John 8, 32, the truth will set you free. The devil doesn't want you to hear the truth. He says, but watch in all things, endure the affliction, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of your ministry. Well, see, that's what God told me today. I mean, this is it. This, this is my. I'm in my fourth quarter, anyway, folks. I mean, let's face it. I'm sixty. I'm sixty-seven. I get tickled, and and I'm not trying to chase rabbit. I'm just going to be honest with you. I get tickled at these men that say they're at, they're at, uh, middle aged, and I say, well, how old are you? They say, well, I'm fifty-five. I said, oh, you're middle aged and you're fifty-five. I don't know a whole lot of hundred and ten year old men. Matter of fact, I don't know a lot of hundred year old men. How about ninety? How about eighty? 
I remember uh, <laughs> Abraham. No, we won't go there. He got eighty five dollars. They need on eighty five ninety. I'm ninety five a hundred. Anyway, so they are middle aged, but we aren't going to be guaranteed that. So anyway, he says, do all the affliction. For I'm now ready to be offered up, and the time of my departure is at hand. And this is what I want you to hear. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I've kept the faith. Don't you want, as a Christian, when you get to heaven, God ain't going to look at your checkbook. He ain't going to look at your, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not against money. I'm not against things. I just tell you that this is the way it is. It's good to have everything, but don't let everything have you. In other words, when the time comes to the end, are you listening to me? When the day comes and we die, and we face God at the judgment, which will be at the, at the resurrection, don't you want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Don't you want him to say, well done, you fought a good fight? You kept the faith and you finished your course. And Paul said, because I have henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He said, which that righteous judge shall give me in that day. But not to me only, but to all of them who love his appearing. Also that love his appearing. Do you love the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, you see, because our time is running short. And I'm just telling you, I love you. I want you to watch these two, these uh clips now these news clips and i want you to listen to what they say but i want you to listen to john roberts at the end of one of the news clips what he says and uh and then i want you to realize we're there we're in a war we're in a war i love you folks tell your tell your people jesus is coming soon He's coming, and when he comes, he's coming with clouds. And when he comes, he's not coming to argue. He's not coming to die. He's not coming to suffer. He's coming as King of King and Lord of Lord. Will you be there with him when the trumpet sounds? Are you going to heaven? If you're not, Lord, of mercy, get saved. Get saved today before it's everlasting too late. I love you, and I'll talk to you again next time on CrusadingForChristPodcast.com. Y'all have a good evening, and I'll see you the next time. Down the hall on the right. Okay. I got somebody down in front of me. I got somebody there. On three, and ten, five, six, maybe. Let me see your hands. Sheriff's office, Sheriff's office, Sheriff's office. Okay, stand by, stand by. Let's just clear it out. Hold it, hold it. I'm gonna hold the body of the gun. You hold it. Hey, I got somebody down here. Get the gun. Get the gun. So the last two gunshots we heard, according to the coroner, were likely the suicide shots seconds before police came through the door. Sandra? Wow. William Ajanas, live in L.A. for us. Thank you. John? Sandra, a horrifying incident unfolding in Florida last night as a 14-year-old girl, 14 years old, armed with a shotgun, and a 12-year-old boy, armed with an AK-47, opened fire on deputies. Sheriffs say both suspects are runaway foster children, and the 14-year-old has a lengthy criminal history. She was shot several times during the shootout and is now in critical condition. Listen here. They want to defund us. They want to sanction us and take qualified immunity away they want to make us the bad guy where have we gone wrong that 12 year old and 14 year old think it's okay to take on law enforcement the sheriff's office plans to release the body cam video of that shooting later on this afternoon Sandra. and in new york city john we're getting more details on the homeless man who's now being charged with a hate crime for allegedly punching an asian woman in an unprovoked attack that, dif that video is so difficult to watch. 48-year-old Alexander Wright had 40 prior arrests. The city's top cop is blaming the legal system that allows career criminals back onto the streets. John, you know, you watch that video and it just, it hurts your heart what happened to that woman on the street. Thankfully, we are hearing that she is in some sort of stabilized condition and doing better. It really does feel, Sandra, like across the country, things are, are going off the rails. I mean, mm. the New York Post sort of had that sentiment, sentiment today. Look at this cover. This is insane, talking about the mentally ill man 
that hit the Asian woman. But, but then you consider what went on in Florida as well, that these kids thought that it was okay because of Horrible. the defund the police movement to start yeah. shooting at sheriff's deputies. Yeah, and to think that is still a, a an active message happening here in New York City where many people don't feel safe walking a block in Manhattan right now. A lot of other places across the country as well. Sandra, after more than a year... Sandra, if this doesn't pull at your heartstrings, I don't know what will. New video from the border with Mexico. A five-year-old boy, absolutely distraught, crying and screaming for help after smugglers abandoned him. Warning, it's tough to watch. Five years old. It's just the latest tragic scene amid a growing border crisis. I shot. Now I have to ask you, after watching just that short, see that was a mass murderer killing all them people in California. And then you had this uh, two teenagers, young, what'd they say, 13, 14, 12, 13, 14 years old, with guns, shooting at policemen. And then finally this little Asian girl Standing in the subway, and some guy comes up and just knocked her down. When there's an absence of good, evil prevails. And let me tell you something. When good men do nothing, evil prevails. But what are we going to do? We, as the church of Jesus Christ, had better stand up. We had better wake up. We had better take up the cross and follow Jesus because the only thing going to change this world is the love of God and the love of Jesus Christ and folks getting saved. That's it. Nothing else is going to save them. Love you all. See you next time on, on, on Crusade for Christ podcast hour. Bye.